Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by the beautiful Bailey Castle. Bailey, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, nice rainy day here in Los Angeles. <laughs> how are we you doing? We are frozen here in Michigan again. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. The cold front has moved back in, so hopefully baseball will still be happening here soon. Um, <laughs> so a little bit about Bailey. Uh, she is a Joseph Jefferson nominated actress based in L.A. Um, she has studied at Steppenwolf West, uh, West under the tutelage of Jeff Perry, Kib Rubenstein, and I don't know if I said that right. Is it Rubenstein or Rubenstein? No, you said it right. Yeah. Awesome. For the first time for everything, I guess. <laughs> um, and Alexandra Billings uh, received her BFA in acting from Cal State Fullerton. That's Woo! awesome. Um, <laughs> Also nominated for Best Supporting Actress by the Chicago Horror Film Festival for her role in Pete Flem's Open Caskets and can be seen in Colton Tran's upcoming horror film, The Bellkeeper, opposite of Randy Couture. So that's really what connected you and I is The Bellkeeper. So spoiler free, obviously, what can you tell people yeah. a little bit about The Bellkeeper? Okay, spoiler free. The Bellkeeper. I was waiting for you to be like, spoiler free. I know. Bellkeeper is the title. That's all I can tell you. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Spoiler free. We made a movie called The Bellkeeper, and I was in it, and some other people were in it too, <laughs> directed right. by Colton Tran. Um, yeah, I'm like, what? What is the like succinct way to put this? Of um, a filmmaking crew wants to make a documentary. Um, some people go missing. They find a creepy old bell, and chaos ensues. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. When I started to read up on it, this is when me and you connected. And uh, I'm very excited to see what you have in store for us with the Bellkeeper. I'm very, very, I'm, I'm very anticipated, I guess. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. Let's stick with it like that. It was, um, it was a fun shoot. It was, you know, I had never had the opportunity to, uh, you know, film at midnight. So it, it was, and you being on a set where you're driving past like, oh, like, there's a creepy barn and like, oh, there's the creepy ranch and like, oh, here's our creepy cabin. Like, great. Like, here we go. And um, it was just like the magic of being on set. And when you can see, you can see everything's like fake, right? But then you're on set and you're terrified. <laughs> right. It's funny how you're like, yeah, on set, you're like, oh, there's a creepy barn and there's a creepy ranch. And I'm like, that's my drive to work. Right. <laughs> Um, it, it is awesome to know that not only do, are you continuing to work in horror, but to start with horror, I mean, with Open Caskets, what was it like being a part of that? Oh, my gosh. So Open Caskets. So I was in Chicago for the last five years. I grew up in Orange County, California, moved to Chicago to pursue theater. And my first play in Chicago, I met this guy named Dave Camelli, who is one of my dear, dear friends now. And... Um, he messaged me one day while we're in the the throes of this play and he was like hey I'm gonna be in this short film met this guy on a different set um, we're looking for another actor to play the part and I thought you'd be perfect and I was like great what is it and he's like it's a horror film and I was like oh cool thinking I'm like oh I'm being chosen as the girl in a horror film <laughs> like really <laughs> all about like awesome and he goes yeah you'd be the monster and I was like Oh, can I curse on this? Can I curse on this podcast? Yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. I was like, holy shit. Yes, sign me up. And it's so funny because it was almost like immersion therapy for me. Yeah. Horror was, I think I told you this, you know, in some correspondence before of horror was something I came to later in life. And when I texted my family, like, I'm going to be the monster in this horror film. They're like, you're not our daughter. Like this makes no sense. Like Bailey's always been scared of everything. And I'm like, I know, I hope he doesn't find out. Like that. I was like, I hope the director just like can't sniff that out of me because I met with him and I was like, it was so funny. I felt like I was like playing charades of the, he's like, so what horror movies have you watched? And I'm like, Halloween, you know, I was like Hellraiser, like all this stuff that I'd watched, but not necessarily willingly. So I was right. too scared. And so working on open caskets was such a, um, so I'd seen all these other horror films that I did like and was still scared by them, but that's the point of it. And there's other things going on. And so when I was working on open caskets, I 
I was in prosthetic makeup for four, you know, putting, getting makeup put on me for four hours and watching this transformation. And it just helped me feel confident too, in a way that, um, in performing in such a way that I just get to be the gnarliest parts of me and be rewarded for it, you know, where sometimes being an actor, being, um, a woman in this business is like, it's all about truly how you look. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I had these, I had like teeth in my, my jaw was sticking out. I had these, like these crazy nails. I can send you pictures. And I just remember like, we we're in this Airbnb that we were filming and I'm like walking up, I'm like sweaty and everything. And I turn, I had these teeth in and I just turn all this drool falls out of my mouth. And I was like, can I get a towel? <laughs> like, the guys were like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. And it was so fun because I'm like the creature under the bed. And mm-hmm. so I had such respect for all these other actors before me in all these horror films, like the person in the ring having to climb out of odd places. I'm like, oh shit, like I'm that person right now. And this is fucking cool. And so... It was such a, it was such a treat because then my, my friend Dave, he's just lying in bed, you know, pretending to be asleep, acting like he's asleep the entire time. And I'm, you know, in this like ripped up medical costume, you know, escape from the insane asylum character, crawling, creeping up alongside the bed. Um, You can actually watch Open Caskets on YouTube, um, Pete Flem. uh, You can look that up on YouTube. And then we have another series coming out soon. We filmed it right before the pandemic. So editing and getting that um, out to festivals has been just a little, you know, bump in the road for that. But um, it's like the next series of seeing the Nibbler, which is the character (laughs) that I played. Yeah. And, And the great thing about this is, one, you guys can see some of these pictures right here. See these pictures she sent me? They look amazing. And if you want to watch the film, you don't have to search for it because I have the links right down here in the description. So make sure you're checking the film out. And not only that, but make sure you're following Bailey on social media because this isn't the end of her career. This is the very beginning. So you're going to want to keep tabs on everything that she has coming up here in the future. And the best way to do that by clicking this link down here and following her on all her social media links. So um, now we talk about what you have going on in the future and what you have going on right now. But Bailey, here for a little bit, I want to go back to the past. And I want to talk about what got you started in horror genre, your first horror movie. And Bailey, your first horror movie was? Halloween. 1978. (laughs) Yes. Um, The original. It's funny because you and I had a little bit, like you said, the correspondence we had back and forth. Um, This wasn't really the most willing watch, I guess, that you had. Um, But we all want to impress boys at some point. So um, do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen Halloween? So true. I had been, I was 23 years old. I was out of college. I had not seen this movie. My parents have been like, that is a scary movie. Like, do not watch that movie. I'm like, okay, I will not watch that movie. Um, And I had met this guy and I was fresh out of college. He was like, totally, I studied theater, got my BFA in acting. He was like polar opposite of that. So I was like, perfect. And I remember one time we were hanging out and his phone started ringing. I was like, what is that sound? And he goes, oh, it's the theme music to Halloween. That's my ringtone. I was like, why is that your ringtone? <laughs> you know, being like a little, like, what does this mean? He's like, it's my, it's, you know, it's my favorite movie. And I'm like, oh, I've never seen it. He's like, you've never seen Halloween? I'm like, never seen Halloween. He goes, okay, we have to watch it. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like totally wanted to impress it. Like, okay. And inside the, like the four-year-old me inside is like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Do it. You're going to be too scared. And um, it was so funny because we started watching it kind of later in the evening and he ended up falling asleep. And I was right. right. <laughs> he's, he's seen it. He sees it. He watches it to fall asleep. Not because it's boring or anything like that, but comfort. He, it's comfort. He, it's his favorite movie. He's seen it so many times. So he'll just nod off. And I remember a couple of times being like, you have to wake up. Like, this is too scary. You can't leave me alone during this. And after a while, basically just being like, you know, leaning in and like, you know, not wanting to look away. I was like, this is an incredible film in this genre that I've been so scared of. And 
too afraid to explore and almost, you know, was marked as such taboo. So I was like, oh, I shouldn't, I can't. And um, it, it just totally turned my head around of like, you actually can go down, this path is now available to you. Um, so yeah, 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 I remember that. He kept falling asleep. I was so mad about that because I was so scared. And then it, it I mean, it's, it's a great movie from the first moment it starts, but just being sucked into just its wonderfulness <laughs> was yeah. uh, what kept me going. Yeah. And it's one of those films that really has stood the test of time. And it's funny because I've talked about this before and people that are constant viewers know this. I grew up not a Halloween fan at all. Um, just... My parents owned a video store. And so I had access to every video I wanted. And Michael Myers to me was always just this boring guy with a knife <laughs> that was stabby, stabby <laughs> in comparisons to your Freddy, your Jason, your sure. Chucky. He was white bread to me. And the older I've gotten, the more I realize he's actually the scariest because he's just a guy. He could be your next door neighbor that just snaps and goes mm -hmm. crazy. So for mm -hmm. that to be your first real horror movie is very intense. Uh, I know. <laughs> do you remember which scene it was? And again, you were a little bit older in life, but do you remember which scene it was, Bailey, that affected you the most? It's that first moment where we see that close-up of Jamie Lee Curtis and he just sits back up. That, to me, was like, I don't know. It was like, I was like, okay, so who is he? Like, how does this happen? How did that, like all the questions started flooding in and just like, God, can we just talk about seventies movie making? Like just so well done, giving things it's time, it's time and like being able to get wide and medium shots and just letting actors live in continuity instead of cutting to all these close-ups and then we watch his like eyes open you're nothing like that it's just the the uncanny gesture of just sitting up in bed when you know that person that thing is supposed to stay prone <laughs> was shocking to me yeah and it, it is because you think he's dead at this moment right you know? right and you know then you got the little kid you can't kill the boogeyman which i think is one of the best lines ever in any movie. It's yeah. my favorite line from any movie, I think, in the horror genre. And um, when you have that sit up, and you were talking about the suspense that comes along with this movie. Now, we talk about, like you said, the Halloween theme, mm -hmm. but John Carpenter's score throughout this whole film is impeccable. And even when you have the absence of score, um, yeah. the, the, John Carpenter is very, very intelligent when it comes to filmmaking, not just being behind the camera, but behind the keyboard and the guitar. It, when it comes to creating a score, that was one of my favorite special features yeah. on the Halloween 2018 Blu-ray was watching him create with like one of the sounds. He took a guitar and distorted it and then used a violin bow to run across it to give it the sound. And it's so unique and so intelligent. And we, right. we know, Bailey, which scene it was that affected you the most. And this is a hard one for me to answer too, but do you know what your favorite scene from Halloween 1978 is? It's so funny. The first thing that came in my head was when you see it's like stabbed up on the wall. The guy. <laughs> the guy, the guy. And it like, that was so, I don't know why that's my first um, thought, but you know, first thought, best thought, right? And, Iconic uh, moment. <laughs> it, like that, I had also, I think also just like, again 70s movie making this isn't cgi it's no. not a cgi guy up there where like i'm just gonna stand on this green block and we'll fix it in post like mm -hmm. how did they do that like that was something having just graduated from acting school was like th that was also maybe like a safety net for me when i got too scared it was like okay flip into the technical like how did they do that how like how is that person acting in this moment Jamie Lee Curtis's scream like how is she screaming and not ruining her vocal cords but that was such a it's such a visceral moment and just a feat in movie making and horror that I think that's my favorite my favorite moment my favorite scene the John Carpenter very also well known for his practical effects um yeah. I'm not anti-CGI 
I think that if you sprinkle CGI in with some practical effects, you can make it look really, really good. Mm -hmm. I'm just anti overuse of CGI. CGI okay. can be overused and it can actually ruin a film in my opinion. So yeah. um, Halloween 20 or 2018, Halloween 1978 <laughs> does have its fair amount of kills. Some good, some boring, but uh -huh. as horror fans, we do love the kills. Do you remember which kill it was that affected you the most from Halloween 78? I mean, that first one with the sister is pretty gnarly. Um, and and that is, I kind of remember being so really shocked by that because it is this little kid and you're coming in on, you know, post-sex, right? There's something really taboo about that as well. Um, this beautiful woman sitting on her vanity, stark naked, and then the little brother coming in and murdering her. I was like, what am I signing up for? Right. <laughs> so I think that, um, and, but, and you don't see it. That's another thing that I think is really well done in these, especially in these older films where my imagination is actually enough to fill yes. it in. And if I, if I actually see the knife sticking in her, it's going to do a disservice to it, but to see it through the mask and you can't see the knife anymore Exactly. You can't see it making contact because of the mask right. that he's wearing. It's such a great, um, like, who's wearing the mask moment. We, we yeah. are Michael right then, right yes. then, which is really that's what I love. unnerving. We yeah. are first person, six-year-old child killer, you know, like, that's right. intense to me. Yeah. Um, and this is a movie that I said it does stand the test of time. It has been remade by Rob Zombie, and it has had the requel with 2018's Halloween. Um, did you see the Rob Zombie's remake? And if so, what were your thoughts on it? You know what? I did not return to Halloween until not this last one, but the second to last one with Jamie Lee Curtis, mm -hmm. older and in it. Um, and um, I don't know. There's something about original, and I'm not against sequels, I think there's something where I start and maybe it's the like film person and me an actor and me that's like oh like how many movies are you gonna make of like one thing you know right. it, to me I'm like I want the answer of like why Michael is who he is and when we see 18 versions of Michael then I'm like then I don't get to know why he is who he is which right. which which you know, that's just my opinion. And and I totally understand the, like, maybe the, like, cotton candy aspect of, like, yeah, it's, like, Halloween 18. Like, we got to just keep, we just got to keep it going. And and I totally understand that, too. So I, I did not see the further, the the um, the sequels after that and the other iterations, except for this last one. And, and, you know, they're good. But after a while, I think there's, um, there's a flow, there's an outline that I know what's going to happen. And so Halloween was something where I was like, I actually don't know what's going to happen right now. And that is something to cherish. And I, I think that as long as they keep making money, they're going to keep doing it, you know? And I'm right. with you. Like, I like Halloween 2018. I really did like Halloween Kills after a second viewing. I didn't like it so much on the first viewing. I thought the dialogue was really clunky. But um, I'm excited for Halloween Ends. Let's see what happens with that. But I love the fact that a movie like X just came out and it made the money that it made and it was an original horror film let's do more of that, that let's, I, let's tap into these more oh, new ideas i cannot you know, I, wait to see that movie have you seen it i have seen it i it, cannot wait to see that movie and i truly if, like my parents ever listen to this or be like my daughter would never say that phrase <laughs> before so it, it just looks so good i think what makes horror stay in the test of time and what makes it so good. And I, this isn't an original thought. I've heard this from somebody else is that when you can take the, the violence, I guess, out of it, the blood out of it, and you still have this story, that's what makes it good. I think sometimes the gratuitous, I know it's like sick too, like the gratuitous, like blood and guts, like fuck yeah. But I'm like, I, I need the justification. I think that's where I'm still at in like my journey with horror. I'm like, I need the justification of horror and blood and guts before I just watch, um, you know, like people get torn apart, before, you know. I totally get it. In the relationship, Ashley is definitely the gore hound. 
and I'm the big softy that wants a love story. Like that's yeah, totally yeah, how it yes. is. Like, yes. And X, yes. I-, I won't talk too much on X. One, because you haven't seen it. And two, it is still in cinema at the time of recording. And right. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but <clears throat> I had a very fun time with it. Um, I'm not a, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of how I want to word this without sounding like a prude. Um, I'm not in, when I'm watching a film, I don't want overly sexual overtones. Sure. And that's re- really the premise of this movie is sexual overtones. Right. But it, it, what it did there that I didn't like, it more than made up for with amazing acting, amazing story, amazing kills. Yeah. And make sure you stay through the credits. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. For anybody that has not seen X, Make okay. sure you stay through the credits. So, okay. um, we talked about Halloween 1978 and how that was your first horror movie and what that meant to you, Bailey. But now I kind of want to throw you a little bit of a curveball here. My little buddy Ghostface has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Bailey? What is your favorite horror movie of all time? Uh, so... It's funny because I never it, tell people I'm going to ask them this question because that's the response I want. I want this <laughs> to be genuine. Like I want, you know, the first thing that pops in that, that's it. You know, that's why I never tell anybody that this is going to be a question I ask. Well, it's interesting because sometimes I'm like, is this actually horror? And maybe it's more psychological horror. And I'm like, does that count? <laughs> um, I think, I think my favorite horror film is Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh God, that's a horror movie. That's yeah. such okay. a horror I'm like, movie. is that a horror movie? <laughs> well, see, I've always been the person to say that horror is what you make it. I think horror mm. is the hardest genre to nail down because you know what makes a horror movie? Well, I gotta be scared. No, I was scared during Pee-Wee's Big Adventure during the large march scene. Not sure. a horror movie. It's right. gotta have death. The Lion King has death in it. Not a horror Not movie, a horror you know. Movie. So for me, it's just like it, it's what you make it. For me to say this is a horror movie. That's uh-huh. really hard for me to nail down because, you know, yeah. oh, it's got, you know, the scare me thing. I wouldn't consider The Day After Tomorrow a horror movie. That's probably the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. End of the world mm-hmm. movies terrify me. But yeah. by definition, it probably wouldn't be considered a horror movie. So um, I also mm-hmm. consider Ghostbusters and Jurassic Park horror <laughs> movies. So <laughs> Love you know, that. to me, it, it is what you make it. So yeah. um, and I, I appreciate you taking your time to come out and hang out with me for a little bit, talk about horror and allow me to come into your life for a little bit, Bailey. But before I let you go, I have one last question for you. We're going to go back to Halloween 1978. And what we're going to do is rank this on a skull count. Now here's the rub. We're not being critics. We're not judging it on score, acting, production, none of the above. What we're doing is strictly judging this movie on how much it affected you on first viewing. So Mm -hmm. zero skulls being not effective, five being very effective, you can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. What would your ranking of Halloween 1978 be? I got to give it like a four point, two, like half, and then this part, this half of the skull. <laughs> the okay. eye socket half of the skull. I'm going to so give this have... 4.38726. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want two eye sockets because um, okay. so we can still be like Mike Myers and put right. that mask on. Um, it totally affected me. It, it was truly one of those like breakthrough moments. I felt like I was adult. I was an adult after watching that movie and having been a really scared kid my entire life and in past correspondences with you, I watched, you know, The Nightmare Before Christmas, not a horror film, but I'll never forget when I first saw Oogie Boogie and he has some like baseline or something in his song whenever he comes on Mm -hmm. screen that that thump haunted my dreams when I was a little kid and and then when I saw it uh Beetlejuice and Alec Baldwin and uh Gina Davis rip their faces off and my parents like oh like they were like oh shit we didn't (laughs) warn her about that we kind of forgot about that part I was like um I'm very scared and it was like I don't know what to expect from the world and I I it felt like no one was teaching me like this is fake this is a movie right. these people aren't real this is not happening this doesn't exist and I was like this is real this can happen at any time and I'm terrified <laughs> so I had like 
gone through the world and I developed this sweet phrase that my mother just like loved. I was like, too scare me. I was like, it's too scare me. And she's like, yup. She would just like pat me on the back and be like, it's too scare me. So no one was like building me a spine. Right. And so finally, like here I am having moved through the world being like, I can't watch that. I can't read that. I can't like, I- I- I'm very like, I can't, we're going to horse blinders because I don't want to be scared was <laughs> Someone be like, you can absolutely watch this movie. It's the best movie ever. And I'm going to go, I'm going to fall asleep <laughs> and right. leave you alone during it. Like it was actually the perfect experience instead of someone like looking at me every five minutes, be like, don't you think that was like the best moment ever? I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm too scared. Right. Now. now you're judging me. Stop and so putting me on the spot, douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it truly just like, God made me like a confident person in the world of this area of cinema and like fun too that like it's fun it's not it's taboo in a fun way and in like in a dark way and in a light way too and that helped me uh, I felt like really become who I helped me like become who I am well now you're acting in horror movies so look how far (laughs) you've actually come (laughs) now I'm like getting nominated for awards being in horror movies like okay this is sick <laughs> right and that's just the beginning i'm so excited to see where you go from here um Thank you. and i do want to say as a sidebar i do consider beetlejuice and nightmare before christmas horror movies i call those uh gateway drug horror movies okay um yes. i look at them like the weed of horror movies like you, you'll you'll do it you'll get high but you probably won't be scared to death like right for right. Me, like monster squad the gate you know, those movies, A Nightmare Before Christmas, which I absolutely despise, by the way. I, everybody laughs, but I don't like that movie. Oh, and um, yeah, I know. And Beetlejuice, you know, like those movies, I think that they are your gateway. Like if you're going to introduce somebody to Chiang to horror, that's where you want to start. That's your yeah. gateway. Yeah. Um, and truly the or- next movie after Halloween, he was like, want to watch The Conjuring? And I'm like, OK, <laughs> like we watched The Conjuring and I was scared shitless. And at the end of the movie, I, it was like stepping off a roller coaster where you're so fucking scared and then you're like again i want to do that again that was great like i'm so glad that you just said that because (laughs) i've said that again everybody that knows me knows i do not condone drug use of any type but (laughs) when you watch horror movies it really is especially your first one it's like getting high for the first time and then you're constantly chasing that dragon again like i want it again Mm -hmm. i need more i need it better you know like Mm -hmm. and that that's what i love about horror and everybody asks me you know what is it about horror that you love why do you like being scared and it's like Mm -hmm. That adrenaline I get that when I see something that truly and the conjuring has my favorite jump scare of all time in the film. Oh, so scary. Uh when she when she comes out and she, look what she made me do. Oh my god. Her arms are cut. Like that rocked me to my core the first time I seen it. And uh I I love that feeling, you know, and then that knowing that everything's all right, it's just a movie, you know. Because my mom, what she used to do when I was young, um, yeah. she would mute the TV. Oh. And be like, look at how silly they look when they're not talking and you can't hear the music. So when I started to get too scared, my mom would just mute the TV and then we'd laugh about it. We'd make up our own words, what they were saying as they were talking. That's and a really we, good technique. Yeah. Um, the yeah. only movie my mom ever shut off was The Exorcist. My mom was like, absolutely <gasps> not. This is too much. I'm scared. You're scared. We're done with this one. My um, mom. Yeah. She's like, I can't watch that one. And that's the next one on my list because I'm like it's it's the it always is number one it's it's the number one horror movie of all time like I have to watch that I still consider it the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life and again for people that are repeat viewers I'm sorry for you to hear this again but watching The Exorcist as a young boy versus watching The Exorcist as the father of little girls Mm. you get scared for completely different reasons and um you know, there's so many scenes in The Exorcist that as a young boy went over my head because I didn't, I don't know a girl's body as a young boy. Mm-hmm. And like the crucifix scene where she's masturbating with the crucifix, like I thought she was just stabbing herself. Right. You know, I'm right. like, oh, she's stabbing herself. My mom's like, no, this is enough. Right, 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 right. Michael do this all the time. She's like, trust me, you don't. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, you know, and then as a father, you know, watching this young lady, you know, being overtaken by Pazuzu the demon is just, yeah. you know, w- take me. You know, I'm, oh. you know, like, yeah. th- not her. Yeah. Yeah. Me, you know, so oh. I, I can't yeah. recommend The Exorcist enough, but I will tell you this. The Exorcist is probably the scariest movie I've ever seen. The Exorcist 3 is mm. easily the best movie in that franchise. It oh, is. Really? 
Oh, hands down. It is in my top probably six favorite movies of all time. The Exorcist 3 is the most underrated horror movie of all time. And it has the best jump scare okay. ever. <laughs> I've never met anybody that did not jump at the jump scare in The Exorcist 3. Nobody. It okay. got everybody I've ever talked to. And I think that's amazing. So okay. oh, um, yeah. after you watch The Exorcist, please hit me up and let me know what you thought of it. I'm really intrigued to see your, th- your feelings on it. I will. I can't wait to watch it. Oh, my God. Do it. So I have to. I also that means I must watch Exorcist, too. <laughs> no. Oh, oh really? No. Oh, great. No, Exorcist. I'm, it's funny because we did a um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. But on the channel, we did a top 10 least favorite horror movies of all time. Uh The Exorcist 2 was my number one least favorite horror movie of all time. It sucked because The Exorcist 2 is so bad that I didn't watch The Exorcist 3 for a long time. And a buddy of mine hit me. Right. Right. And then I had a friend of mine hit me up like, dude, let's do a franchise ranking of The Exorcist. And I was like, yeah, okay. Then I hung up and I was like, shit, I have to watch all The Exorcist movies now. (laughs) Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, oh, it's going to go whatever, 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 one. And then I watched it. And after we watched three, because three is available on either Amazon Prime or Shutter right now. After we watched it, the minute that movie ended, I ordered the Blu-ray just so I could watch all the special features on it. That's how much I was in love with that movie. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Okay. I will. I promise. (laughs) You got to let me know. I will. Um, So, baby, again, thank you so much for doing this. We're at the the third act now, guys. The curtains are about to fall. The credits are about to roll. Before they do, I want to remind everybody, you can watch the movie right down here in the description. And just as importantly, you can follow Bailey on social media down here in the description as well. So please make sure you're doing that. You want to stay up to date on everything that she has coming up. Until next time, guys. Bailey, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Okay. Everyone else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.